Also today, North Korea said that it released a Canadian pastor who's been serving a life sentence there since 2015. The North State News Agency said that Hyun Soo Lim was let go on, quote, sick bail, but gave no other details. It comes two months after the death of American student Otto Warmbier, who had been in a coma when he was released from North Korea. In the day's other news, there is word that FBI agents have searched a home of former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort and seized documents and other materials. The Washington Post first reported the pre-dawn raid and said it happened in late July. A Manafort spokesman confirmed the search and said that Manafort has, quote, consistently cooperated with law enforcement and other serious inquiries and did so on this occasion as well. Allegations of election fraud set off deadly clashes in Kenya today. Early results from yesterday's vote showed President Uhuru Kenyatta with a strong lead. But challenger Raila Odinga claimed that hackers infiltrated an election database. Protesters in Nairobi and elsewhere burned tires and set up roadblocks. At least three people were killed. Odinga urged calm but said that he doesn't control the people. Democratic elections are based on the basic principle of the sovereignty by the people. It is not a show for those who stand for election and those who run it. The Kenyan Election Commission defended its system and denied interference, quote, before, during, or after the vote. The United Nations says that up to 50 migrants were deliberately drowned off the coast of Yemen today. The U.N.'s migration agency said that a smuggler forced more than 120 people into the water when he saw authorities on the shore. The migrants were from, were from Somalia and Ethiopia. Their average age was around 16. The death toll from yesterday's powerful earthquake in southwest China has risen to at least 19. It hit near a national park that is one of the country's top tourist attractions. Nearly 250 people were injured. Rescue crews worked around the clock to pull victims from under heaps of debris and collapsed rock. But they were slowed by unsafe conditions. As you can see on both sides of the valley, there are mud and rock slides everywhere, so our rescue has been cut short. All we can do is stay here and observe until there's a change for the better. Once that's happened, we'll go in there and begin the rescue. A second strong earthquake in far northwest China hit this morning and left dozens of people injured and damaged more than a thousand homes. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on eight more people in Venezuela amid that country's deepening crisis. They target current and former government officials for their role in the creation of President Nicolas Maduro's new all-powerful constitutional assembly. One of the sanctioned individuals is the brother of the late Venezuelan president, Hugo Go Chavez. There was yet another attack targeting security forces in France today. A man rammed his car into a group of soldiers in a Paris suburb, injuring six of them. After an hours-long manhunt, police cornered the suspect on a nearby highway, opened fire and wounded him. The man's motivation was unclear, but officials say they are looking at it as a potential terror attack. We know it was a deliberate act. It was not an accident. What I can say is that the anti-terrorism section of the Paris prosecutor's office is in charge of the case. This shows that today the threat remains extremely high and that our security forces, our military forces, are still being targeted. Later, heavily armed and masked police searched a building believed to be linked to the attacker. President Trump appeared to bristle today over comments by the Senate's top Republican on health care. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said on Monday that Mr. Trump had, quote, excessive expectations about how quickly lawmakers could act. But in a tweet, the president said he disagreed, adding, after seven years of hearing, repeal and replace, why not done? And on Wall Street today, stocks were lower as investors weighed tensions between the U.S. and North Korea. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 36 points to close at 22,048. The Nasdaq fell 18, and the S&P 500 dropped a fraction of a point.